This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hey everybody, welcome to Groomer Humor on Pet Life Radio. As always, we are your hosts, I'm Rudy V, along with my son, Anthony Ray. In this episode, guys, we're going to be talking about how to introduce puppies to grooming. This could be a huge challenge in a lot of cases. Guys, introducing a puppy to grooming is like introducing Anthony to a bar of soap. Guys, we got tons of shout outs today. We got our funny comment segment. We got all that and much, much more when we come back on Groomer Humor. Does your dog itch, scratch, stink, or shed like crazy? Come to Dynavite for help. Order a 90 day supply of Dynavite. Everything we tried failed except the Dynavite. Pick up two bottles of Super Mega Fish Oil. Get the third bottle free. Packed with omega-3, DHA, and EPA fatty acids. Super Mega is great for your dog's immune system, healthy skin, and soft, shiny fur. Dogs love it. Try Super Omega Fish Oil. Buy two. Get one free. At Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. And welcome back to Groomer Humor, guys. Again, we are your hosts. I'm Rudy V, along with the very talented, soapless Anthony Ray. Ant, how you doing today, man? Well, stinky, apparently, as usual, as as you like to point out, and all of our fans like to point out every chance you all get. Okay. Here's the concept, though. Listen, deodorant works a lot better when you wash first. Because what happens is if, you know, what you keep doing, what, you know, you're missing the con. If you put the deodorant on and then try to bathe later, you you don't get as clean. And that's, uh, I'm I'm really hoping that you start to grasp things. It's summertime. Mm. So is that, is that how it works? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I thought you were going to say when you, deodorant works better when you use it. So that too, you gave me a little bit of leeway there actually. So I appreciate that. You're so kind. Well, I, I'm your dad. I love you. I'm just, listen, you shouldn't always smell like you came back from a fishing trip. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you shouldn't always look like you just came back from laser scalp surgery. <laughs> <laughs> I am getting my varicose veins done soon. Oh, yeah. It, speaking of laser, but yeah. here, the guy said that my varicose veins are so bad, <laughs> they can't do the laser. Yeah. Didn't he say too that uh, that it's gonna take five sessions? <laughs> yep, five sessions. Why is everything so long for me? I don't whether know. it's like whether it's trays for my teeth, I need seventeen of them. Everybody else needs seven. You know, <laughs> We're, you know, you know, varicose veins. It's an in and out surgery. Usually, it's done in one shot. For me, I need five sessions. <laughs> Why am I such high maintenance? I don't I get don't it. Know. Well, you work had, hard. Yeah, You're I do. Damaged. I, man, I'm so damaged. God, not just physically either, mentally, emotionally. <laughs> As you guys get to know me, try, I'm going to tell you more about myself. Trust me. I yeah. wear my heart on my sleeve. So uh, I'm telling you, the stuff that we talk about on our show, when people do get to meet us, I don't know that they're actually going to want to spend a whole lot of time with us. Well, I no. stink. You're mentally like gone. I'm, I'm, <laughs> and I'm physically shot. gone. Physically, yeah. I, it's just amazing how I'm just, I still breathe, but yeah. I guess it's uh, <laughs> God's plan for me. <laughs> What's know? funny God. is if you ever do get recognized in public, it's always going to be a medical question for you. It's a, oh, hi, I love yeah. your show. How are your varicose veins? <laughs> how's the veins? <laughs> yeah, how's the ve- Oh, your teeth look okay. Oh, <laughs> exactly. They look good. <laughs> I wish the Rogaine would work for you. You're really nice. <laughs> <laughs> Using of the Rogaine, check. Uh, God, I hope I never have to use the Rogaine. Got me too. That's tough. It's a tough uh, road, but um, hey, man, you're a good-looking guy. Anyway, you. good-looking I might kid. Stink, but I'm a good-looking guy. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, let's get to our our topic here. Our topic is puppies, guys. Mm-hmm. 
You know, here's the thing. Springtime. We're in our springtime here in, in northern New Jersey. Everything is just blossoming and you can hear the birds chirping and, you know, they're you know, listen. I mean, I'm just going to put it bluntly. Everything's having sex. You know, there's no <laughs> other way to put it. But, you know, the sex season is in for all of us animals. And yes, we are all animals. <laughs> um most better than us. But with that being said, this is a big puppy uh, time of year. People get puppies in the springtime more than ever. I think next to Christmas, I think Christmas is a big time for puppies as well as a gift. But because again, the sex season is in, uh, there just are uh, massive amounts of puppies being bred. But here's the thing, they all need to get groomed guys. So we're going to be talking about that because again, like I said, it's, it could be a little bit of a challenge. Introducing a puppy to grooming is nine out of 10 times, probably the hardest grooming of all. On occasion, you have that superb puppy that acts like they've been doing it their entire six weeks of life. Uh, like we just had with Angel just oh. recently, who was it just her personality just fits her name. I, it's an incredibly sweet puppy. But in most cases, again, it's a huge challenge because the puppies are terrified. They're, they're so scared of the clippers. They're so scared of just being out of their environment. You got to keep in mind, this poor puppy was taken away from its mom, its siblings, you know, two months ago. And now everything is just huge to this puppy. You're huge. Your body's huge. They're terrified. So you go to approach them with a pair of clippers that are just loud and, you know, and moving at, you know, 2,500 RPMs per minute. Listen, it's going to make a puppy afraid. So how do you overcome that? You know, that's the big question, right, Ant? You have to earn their trust. There you they go. Need to, they need to know 100% that you're not going to hurt them. So you They're, can't do too much on the first grooming. I mean, we have we have people who get puppies come in just to hang out for a little while once in a while, just so we could meet the puppy and the puppy can know us a little bit before we just go, all right, so these are clippers, these are scissors, stay still. Like, it just doesn't work that way. Right, exactly. And we have some clients that come in for a whole month, twice a week, just for us to put them on the grooming table mm. and kind of just pet them and turn the clippers on for literally seconds just to get them used to the sound, uh, run the clippers for 20 seconds and kind of scratch the dog's neck while running the clippers. If you want to see us in action, go to our YouTube channel, go to youtube.com, punch in grooming by Rudy and check out our Oreos first grooming video so you can see you'll see that oreo is just uh you know he is real jumpy uh, you know in in that first video but then if you see him in a later video he's just a hundred times better and now we do oreo regularly and he just stands like a statue so again if introduced properly it can be a lot less of a challenge and you can set it up where this dog will be okay with the grooming for the remainder of its life for its life span rather you know so. yeah i agree also i'm glad you mentioned the oreo video because that video also proves a uh it proves wrong a comment that we got recently i don't know if they were trying to be funny or whatever our fans are very uh, all over the place that they're we have the coolest people watching our channel and listening to our show so sometimes we don't understand the humor it's hard to relay that through words only, but the comment had said something along the lines of uh, notice how these guys only use the most well-behaved dogs or some, yeah. something along those lines. You remember that comment. And yeah. um, if you watch Oreo's puppy video, you'll see that, no, that's not true. And our dogs are good because we've trained them to be that way. Most dogs are challenging. You'll get your select few that are still like statue. But, uh, <laughs> you know, we wouldn't be in business if we didn't have to do some difficult dog. Unless your name is Angel. Apparently this week we had a, a, a puppy who was amazing. But, uh, you know, very rarely do puppies just start off being so good at this. We have to train them to do that. And most of our customers, we've been doing them since they're puppies. So our dogs and our videos are good. That's right. Yeah. It's, it's not coming because the dogs are so great at it. It's what we're putting into the dogs. That's why when you look at our videos, you're seeing how sweet the dogs are. We are responsible for that. And also the owners are responsible for that because of what we have taught them. Um, it's no different than, you know, my cat from hell where, you know, you're given an assignment. That's what we do. 
we report what the dog's struggling with. For example, if the dog is really struggling with the brushing or something like that, which is another thing they tend to hate, uh, especially a thick-coated dog or a dog that tends to not easily, a puppy that tends to not easily, easily, we tell the people to brush at home, brush in increments, make it short and sweet. You know, we instruct people on how they should uh, go about their maintenance at home, which will in turn better the grooming experience here. Sometimes a dog may not crate well. So we tell people, hey, listen, have a crate at home. Train your dog to be in the crate because when your dog comes to the grooming shop, your dog has to be in a crate for a while so that they're not so upset and uh, not so uh, not, not having this anxiety to get out. Again, when we go on YouTube and you see some videos, you see some groomers, and not to knock anybody, I know you're trying your best, but if you're sitting there, you know, just imposing this grooming on a dog, uh, especially a puppy that is just not having it, it's stressing so badly, listen, there are other alternatives, and you have to seek those other alternatives. You can work with that dog as long as you can. Like we're saying, you bring the dog in twice a week just to hang out, just for small brush outs. Some puppies become ungroomable. And if a dog is ungroomable, there's not a groomer out there that should be grooming that dog. The other alternative is you may have that dog that gets so stressed out that it will die on the grooming table. And we've heard of this, guys. This has happened, and it happens. This has to stop happening, okay? If that's the type of dog, then listen, you seek vet help. What you do is you have that dog be done maybe four or five times a year for a complete shave down under anesthesia, okay, or some kind of sedation, and you have the vet do it. But again, there are some dogs that are such a high challenge, I feel, in my opinion, and you you groomers out there may agree and you may not agree, that it should not be done by a groomer. Yeah, it depends. Depends on the situation. You have to work together with your groomer to figure that stuff out. That's why I like what you said earlier, um, and we've done a whole episode on it where you said that we we work with our customers. We become friends with our customers. We report to them what they need to do at home or, or that maybe they could have to come more often or whatever, the hangout thing. We become friends with our customers. It's very personable. First, they choose us, and then we have to choose them back. That's some right. People will call. And um, they'll bring their dog in, and it'll just not be something we could take on at the, at the time. We aren't the best groomer for you at the moment, whether it be, you know, the dog, we just right. don't have the cage space, or the dog That's is very, right. very aggressive. You never got him groomed. Now you kind of need yeah. the help of a vet, and we'll still give you those tips, but yeah. maybe we're not the groomer for you. But again, you yeah. call us, then we have to choose you too, because we want to mm-hmm. be there for you too in the best way we can. And here's the thing ultimately, the dog has to choose us, okay? Yeah. And getting back to the whole trust issue, the dog has to choose us. And I'll tell you right now, if you're just kind of forcing this grooming onto a puppy, that dog's never going to choose you. It's never going to choose you. And all it's going to do is associate grooming with this horrific experience. So again, guys, the reason why we don't take on new clients at certain times is because we spend so much time with our existing clients. We're not a chop shop. We're not the shop that's going to sit there and do 10, 15 dogs a day. Uh Uh-uh. We don't work that way because what we do in our shop is a lot more intense. We take a lot of pride in training our dogs to get groomed and not to say that we won't work with you or take on new clients because we do it all the time. But like you just said, if the timing's not right, if I have a new puppy that's requiring that I sit with this dog an hour twice a week, guess what, man? That's two less dogs a week just to spend time with this dog because I care enough to, and I believe that I can get this dog to come around and really accept the process, you know? But again, listen, guys, this is how important grooming is. Again, this is why we do the show. This is the reason why we do our YouTube channel is because we want to bring to life the truth of this industry and what, in our opinion, and in a lot of groomers' opinion, how things should be done. I was just at Intergroom recently, and again, I had the the luxury of talking to my buddy, Joey Villani. If you want to know anything about Joey Villani, look him up. Just punch in Joey Villani, Intergroom, all of his stuff will pop up. But uh, Joey and I have been good friends for a very, very long time. We started grooming at the same time, and um, we agree that the grooming industry has turned into a specialty industry, okay? I'm not going to go to a brain surgeon if I need heart surgery, 
Okay. Both doctors, but I'm, you know, I'm not going to go to a dentist if I have an ingrown toenail. Both <laughs> doctors, you know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> right. But the point I'm trying to make here is that there are certain groomers that do great in certain things. Some groomers are great with puppies. Some groomers are great with old dogs. Some groomers are great with aggressive dogs. Some groomers are great with geriatric dogs, dogs that have problems. And, you know, we've mentioned this before, but we really want to hammer it home because this is what's happening in this industry right now. Groomers are, they are special. And that's why, and again, you have your universal groomer. You got those groomers out there that are just, they're, they're excellent in all of it, mm. you know? And you know what? Props to you. Props to you. As we always say, we're groomer advocates here and we want what's best ultimately for the dog. But you got to keep yourself safe. You got to keep that dog safe. And I could tell you again, forcing a grooming on a puppy is not keeping anything safe at all. No, at all. no. But um, here's the thing. Here's an example of how tedious it could be to work with a puppy. Say you bring a puppy in first time. The puppy has no idea what's going on. You try to do too much. For example, you hit one of the veins when you're cutting the puppy's nails. You just created a dog that is never going to like their nails being cut ever in their entire life. And one Bingo. Second, there you go. It's what That's just what like happens that. next. That the dog yeah. will be so vicious when you yep. go to cut its nails the next time, no matter what. And you know what? That's a great point because, again, we get that comment on our nail clip videos all the time. My dog hates it. My dog will take your face off. You want to know why? At some point or another, 99% of the time, somebody hit that vein early on. Mm. Okay? What we do, what we do here is when we get puppies, we explain to the customer, we're going to tip the nails. Yeah. And I mean tip. We're not getting anywhere close to the veins on the first nail clip, maybe second, third, maybe tenth. Mm -hmm. Until that dog feels comfortable with the feeling of how that blade's coming across that nail and the sound of the clipper. And let me tell you something, when you do it that way, guess what? 99% of the time, you'll clip that dog's nails and you'll get them back further and further. Because again, what Anthony said right up front, trust. Yeah. Trust. It, it, if you never hit the vein early on and by tipping the nail, you won't hit the vein. That dog will never associate the nails with anything bad. It'll just be, oh, that feels weird. And that's why you said it two, three, four times in, maybe even 10, depending on the dog. They'll accept that it feels a little strange, but it doesn't hurt. So they won't right. fight you that much on it. It happens. Yeah. We see it every day. We see it all the time. All the time. And here's the thing, too. When you gain that amount of trust, guess what ends up happening in the end? Not only are you able to cut the nails back to the desired length, you can introduce the nail grinder, too, and really get them nice and ground, and you get those nails done real, real well 90% of the time. That's what will happen if you just don't force the issue, if you just don't try to, to, to do too much right off the bat. You know, again, like we've always said, I've used this in the past too. You don't take a toddler and put them in the seventh grade. You know what no. I'm saying? Because they just, they wouldn't know what the heck is happening. So why, why do that to a puppy? It's gradual. You have to do, you, grooming is gradual. It needs to in, be introduced slowly. It needs to be introduced methodically. It needs to be introduced on a, on a trust level. You know, again, if you guys are interested in learning more about this too or going to grooming school, check out Erica. Salvamini at what, what's <laughs> I always mess up her school's name. Just all, for all, pause. Ju I always say all for pause. Just all for, for pause. Yeah, all, just for pause. <laughs> just for pause in Lynnhurst, New Jersey, guys. And again, listen to the pros. Listen to what we're trying to tell you here. If you're that pseudo groomer and you're taking it uh, and you want to do it yourself, we're all for that too. But check out our videos. Go to Grooming by Rudy. Check out our videos so that you can see how we're doing it because we're, you know, with Anthony's amazing filming dude you're a great filmer uh oh, thank we're, you oh, <laughs> smelly at times but a uh, good filmer a um, smelly good filmer All right. so, a smelly good filmer you are my son but here's the thing <laughs> with, with anthony so we're showing you up close videos we're really showing you in detail how to do it i got a funny comment the other day the guy said i'm using a jujitsu move on how to do the pads i don't know if you read that one or not <laughs> uh, but it's true. I'm supporting the body. I'm holding that front leg. I'm supporting the body. It's just a, it's not just the clippers. It's how you're holding the dog. 
dogs, so on and so forth. There's just so many things to learn about grooming. And all you groomers out there, once again, please, if you do things a certain way and it works for you, share it. Share it, you know? Start your own YouTube channel, man. I, listen, that's what we, we're all about this. We, we, we just want to enhance everything about grooming, you know? Yeah, we have um, – I love some of the grooming channels that are out there. Um, yeah. Somebody um, who was – I think it was Love of Grooming and Pet Grooming. They grooming. actually subscribed to our channel, and that meant we, a lot because they, they, they have like 60,000 subscribers, and it's like that's, yep. a, that's a big channel. Uh, you know, yeah. we're coming up on 10, so we're getting, we're getting up there ourselves, but, uh, yeah, that meant a lot that, that was, uh, yeah. you know, yeah, let's work together, spread the word, let's collaborate. That's what let's YouTube collab. is really all about anyway. That's right. Share the love, love of grooming. Thank you so much for subscribing to us. We subscribe back to you guys too. We love what you guys are doing. Again, we just, we appreciate it. We're not, we're not here to try to monopolize anything or try to make it. Listen, we want to, we want to better this industry as we always mention. And, yeah. uh. Again, not to get off topic too much, our topic is puppies today, but the goal here is to be able to groom that puppy through its entire life with minimal stress, minimal stress. And we're going to be dishing out and showing you even more puppy videos. What was the other puppy video? We did another puppy video with uh, Chris uh, Aria. and Ol- Aria. Uh, yeah. Check out, yeah, uh, what was it, uh, uh, Westy Puppies First Grooming. Yeah, Westy Puppy. Um, yeah. I don't Chris know if it was and, called uh, First Grooming. I forget yeah. what we titled it, but yeah, it's a Westy Puppy. Yeah. Her name is just, Aria. She was uh, really, really good. Yeah, Chris and Ola Kazua. I struggle with their last name. But, uh, yeah, the, <laughs> you know, Chris and Ola, guys, thank you so much. Again, uh, we've been doing, we did their, we've been doing their dog Bijou, who's a, elderly dog now who's just just an angel because again these people have listened to us they've taken our advice they're doing what they have to do at home and if you check out that video uh with aria you'll see how good she is that's actually the not the norm because she did very very good on her first grooming along with angel uh just recently that we did Uh, but a big part of that too and i got to give you your smelly props again here a big part of that is is Anthony assisting me with the puppies, and we're going to show videos on that too, how Anthony is sitting there kind of uh, distracting the puppy or the dog that we're doing from something it doesn't like. Anthony is a huge, huge part of the process. He's not always on camera, and again, we're going to have to tripod and show how Anthony is helping me with the groomings as well. Again, it's just uh, for future videos because we truly believe in, in having an assistant. You, you know. just like being the only one on camera. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes I like to steal the show. <laughs> it's all about me, you know. <laughs> I said a rhyme. All right. Well, why don't we uh, Why don't yeah. we go to break and come back and we'll wrap it all up. And I think we have a funny comment or two to discuss with you guys as always. So, a uh, yeah. Shout outs. Yeah, a couple more shout outs. Got a few more things coming. We're almost almost gonna wrap it up here. But yeah, we'll be right back on Groomer Humor. We wear fur and we're damn proud of it. What? And our four legs and our tail. And we go to the bathroom outside. Well, we may not be too proud of that. (laughs) Sniff around. Then mark your spot right here. Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Welcome back to Groomer Humor on Pet Life Radio. I am Anthony Ray, hanging out with my balding father, Rudy V, my co-host, Himosabi. <laughs> no hair. Uh, <laughs> Himosabi. No. What, what is that, my Cherokee name? I guess so. Ah. Himosabi, no hair. <laughs> so. God. We've talked about a lot up to this point, as, uh, as as usual. We've talked about puppies, things you can do when you get a puppy to get them used to accepting the grooming process as a whole. Personally, we spend a lot of time with our puppies before we even break out with the clippers and uh, all that. We have our customers come in, spend a little time with us. Trust is really the nail in the coffin with that. If you don't get the puppy to trust that you're not going to hurt it, that's going to be a, a difficult grooming for the foreseeable future. We talked about uh, me helping out a little bit uh, more than our YouTube videos actually show because I'm holding the camera. 
But um, especially with puppies, and most recently this week, at the time of this recording, we had a puppy named Angel who really stood as still as possible when I started scratching behind her ears. And that yep. was, uh, she would not have been able to be finished unless I was doing that. So little yep. things like that that you kind of pick up on and learn, you yep. know, That's really right. go a long way. Yeah, you got to learn quick. You got to learn the dog. And, and that was great, Anthony. You noticed right away, wow, when I scratch behind her ear, she goes into this like real, real calm mode. And when you were doing that, it allowed me to literally do a snap on comb on her body and she wasn't flinching anymore. She wasn't coming around trying to bite the clippers or try to see what was going on just by scratching her ears because you just learned her real quick. And uh, these are the little things. We're introducing them to clippers slowly. We're not doing uh, really uh, aggressive nail clips right off the bat. Uh, long story short, listen, we're just doing as minimal as possible in the first grooming or so. And slow and steady wins the race when it comes to puppy grooming. That's the key here. But we want to do a couple of shout outs here to our more recent puppies that we've just uh, done right off the bat. Linda Hunley, thank you so much with Angel. We just had her here on Tuesday, and what a sweet little silky terrier. Chris Maceros and her mom, I'm sorry, Chris, I forgot the puppy's name, and I didn't write it down on the index card, but another sweet, sweet dog. Tina and Fabio Jimenez with Oreo. Check out our Oreo video on YouTube. Chris and Ola with Aria and his other puppy. Again, I forgot the puppy's, the other puppy's name. Again, guys, we're getting so many puppies right now. But that's just to mention a few. If you recently got a puppy, guys, do what's best here and find a groomer that's willing to take that extra time to gain that trust, as Anthony said. Nala. Nala. Thank you so much. Nala. Thank you, Chris. Yes. Thanks. thanks. I remember yep. that Chris one. and I don't, Nola I don't, with I don't, yeah. Nala. Both really sweet Westies. Really yeah. sweet Westies. But yeah. So we just we want to give a couple of shout outs to our recent puppies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. We love you. All right. Yep. So. I'm a professional. <laughs> we have. I wrote a few down, but I'm going to start with this one, Dad. This one. Okay. This one is, you know, I, I have a bunch here that I, I did a little research this morning going through all the ones that we've, you know, like deleted or got emailed or whatever. And, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm going through them right now. You know, that, hey, you guys are stupid, uh, <laughs> idiots, uh, his teeth are gross, Anthony stinks, all of that. This one caught my eye, though, and it's weird because <laughs> I just don't. This one says, I don't believe you two are related you're both liars. Yeah. And yeah. I, that's I, it. I don't know. <laughs> what? I like that one. You know, I think, again, because you don't really look like me. I, at, I guess. And, I and, and also, like, people assume, because you're Anthony Ray, that you have a different last name. <laughs> but, yeah, and I but, don't. It's still Valero. I, 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 like, I like the liars, though. Like, you two are liars. Yeah, um, like... I, like, I like, you know, you know, like, you know me. Yeah, that's funny because you could have just said, I don't believe the two of you are related and put a period and went about your day. But you had to call us liars before liars. you headed out. Yeah. You know, I don't understand. The, the Why does it have to be an insult? Yeah. You know, I like how people are feeling comfortable enough to call us that, though. You, yeah. you got to feel comfortable with somebody to call him a liar. Sure. You know? Yeah. But, um, right. And there's no question mark in there, but I guess I'm going to answer it. Yes, we are, in fact, related. You know what? Um, well, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to question that. too. I want a DNA test. Yeah. OK. I, I think we should do a little test just to, you know, be clear. I'm mm -hmm. not real sure. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Sometimes people say we look like brothers. Sometimes people say we look like nothing alike. I know yeah. you look more like Rudy, my little brother, Rudy, Rudy Jr. Yeah. Oh, no, you, I know he's mine. He's yeah, definitely mine. He's yours. Uh huh. But you, I don't know. You know. Yeah. I am very hairy compared you're, to. Exactly. Okay. I have no hair. You're hairy. What's yeah, going on? Yeah, your legs have no hair on them, no. which is straight. They look, you're, from the waist down, you're like a little boy. Yeah, it looks and, like, <laughs> right, I'm like, I'm like a little gymnast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, got, yeah, you look like a little Olympian. <laughs> and, uh, and then from the waist up, you know, a bit of a car crash going on, but. Yeah, oh, um, who's, who's the little guy in that commercial? The sweet one. Oh, yeah. That's uh, the Dr. Pepper guy. Yeah. I yeah. look a little. I'm little, like him. I think his name is a Little I'm, Sweet. Little Sweet. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit like Little Sweet. Yeah, exactly. You're, you, you know, tiny little, tiny little man boy. Little, little man, man boy. 
<laughs> okay. And um, yeah, so yeah, we're related. We're not liars. Go away. Now this one is this one uh, now now back to basics. Um, this one's more what we're used to. This one's not as cerebral. This one just says, "Why does Anthony look like Fidel Castro?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> funny thing is, uh, I am half Cuban, so uh, <laughs> that's the thing. You know, you're, like you guys aren't far off. You, you no, know? no, especially I wish they when, were. <laughs> when you wear that conductor's hat, man. You you just look like you know a story out out of Scar face or something because yeah. you, do, you really do look like Fidel there. Here's the thing. I like that hat. It's very comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I, well, I don't know if any of you guys have heard of um, him. He's a really funny YouTube creator. His name is Doug Walker. His, he goes by the name of Nostalgia Critic. Channel Awesome. Go check them out if you want. They curse and stuff, but it's hilarious. He does movie reviews. Anyway, he wears that same hat, and it looks good on him. So I was walking around in the store one day. I noticed the hat, and I was like, you know, I'm going to get this. Is it, you know, Doug Walker wears one of these. I, I, I love these. And I put it on. And uh, my beard was really long at the time. And uh, unfortunately, this comment is not the first time I've heard that. No. Uh, <laughs> it, yeah, it must be the Cuban in you. Yeah, I guess so. It, it, I mean, maybe it's a good thing I don't really speak much Spanish because if yeah. I was, if I had that hat on with a long beard and I'm walking around talking Spanish, I don't know. It's it's gonna, yeah. you know. I speak um, more Spanish than you. You do well. You you know you you had yeah. Tu eres estúpido. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I understand. I do understand it a little bit. Dad. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so yeah, that that about wraps it up. That yeah. was kind. Of, I, I bet you feel a little bit better, Dad. Usually the comments are about your teeth or your hair. Yeah, or, you I know. feel like I feel like a million bucks today. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. right. Uh, yeah. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> I, you know, I definitely appreciate it. If, you know what? Here, just before we go, if you do, being that I look like my younger son looks exactly like me, and I know that he is my son for sure. Yeah, that's uh, confirmed. Give, that's, that's confirmed. confirmed. And he's an artist, too. He draws real well. So if you're interested in looking at any art, check out his YouTube channel. It's called RV, like Victor, RV Illustrates. And uh, you can see my, my talented real son in action. Yeah. RV Illustrates. Go to YouTube.com and check out RV Illustrates. Yeah, go check out what <laughs> could be my little brother. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not 100%. I can't draw if if I had a gun to my head. So <laughs> that is yeah. uh, that's you're, another you're, notch toward the maybe I'm not related to you because yeah, you, you can draw too, Dad. Yes, and I Rudy can, can and I cannot. You can. Yeah, you struggle with stick figures. Yeah, I do, actually. All right, enough, enough. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> We're going away now. It's over. It's thank over. you for thank you for <laughs> Thanks, see now God. I'm upset because today was all about me. <laughs> you usually take the brunt of, of of the funny stuff. Bring us home, Fidel. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, gracias. Thank you so much for stopping by. <laughs> uh, uh, as always, we'd like to take our producer, Mark Winter. Thank you so much, Mark. I don't know why I'm being sexy, Fidel. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> sexy Fidel. Sexy Fidel. Okay. If you haven't done so already, head on over to our YouTube channel. It's called Grooming by Rudy. That's Grooming by Rudy on YouTube.com. Leave a comment, like, share, subscribe. We want to hear from you guys. Go and check out my possible little brothers. YouTube channel. He's an artist, really good. RV Illustrates on YouTube. He's he's awesome. Uh, you could also like Grooming by Rudy on Facebook. Follow Grooming by Rudy on Instagram and Twitter. It has been an absolute pleasure as always. And until next time, take care of yourselves and your pets. <laughs> Let's talk pets every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> <laughs>